Good afternoon. I'm Lori Brown. Welcome to this news briefing from the 254th National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society in Washington, D.C. We're joined today by Dr. Hayriwe Unal from Sabanki University in Turkey. He will be talking to us today about the clay-based packaging he's been developing to help keep food fresh longer. Dr. Unal. Thank you and good afternoon. Uh, maintaining the quality and freshness of food products is a big challenge as um, spoilage of food products can lead to um, economic losses and also health related problems. So one smart way of keeping food fresh for longer is uh, using active packaging. And uh, active packaging uh, contains some uh, active components which interact with food either by releasing molecules that in that um, prevent the spoilage of food or by removing, scavenging uh, molecules from the headspace which um, cause spoilage. So uh, in our work at Sabanji University, we want to develop multifunctional active food packaging materials which are antibacterial, which have ethylene scavenging properties and also gas barrier properties. The nanoparticles we utilize to obtain these functions were halocyte nanotubes. Halocyte nanotubes are natural clay nanoparticles. What makes them special is their um, empty tubular structures, which allows loading and sustained release of active components. To obtain antibacterial um, packaging films, we took these halocyte nanotubes loaded them with the active component of the thyme oil, carvacrol, and this allowed uh, the creation of antibacterial nanoparticles which show sustained release of thyme oil. So we took these nanoparticles and coated them onto the inner surface of polyethylene, which resulted in sustained release of thyme oil and which uh, was able to prevent the growth of uh, bacteria on the, package, on the surface of packaged food. So we tested our films on pathogenic bacteria and um, we demonstrated about 90% killing efficiency on our films compared to polyethylene films which didn't contain these halocyte nanotubes. Uh, we also wanted to develop uh, food packaging material with ethylene scavenging properties. Ethylene is a plant hormone which is released by fruits and vegetables and it is uh, responsible for the ripening. But when the excess um, ethylene gas formed in the packaging headspace is not removed, it can cause spoilage. So that's, um, one, the, that was the second function we focused on. So we first tested the inherent ethylene scavenging capacity of halocyte nanotubes and demonstrated it has a large capacity. And then when we incorporated these halocyte nanotubes into polyethylene films at a ratio of five, five weight percent. Uh, we improved the ethylene scavenging capacity of the polyethylene film by 20%. So we tested this effect on uh, fruits and vegetables. We first tested, tested bananas and um, we saw that the bananas packaged with um, our film uh, retained their color and were free of brown spots, whereas the control bananas uh, had a darker color and were full of uh, brown spots. So we also tested uh, ethylene scavenging capacity of our films on tomatoes as post-harvest uh, firmness, post-harvest um, firmness is also dependent on, on ethylene gas. Uh, tomatoes that were wrapped with our film uh, retained almost retained their firm, firmness at the end of six days, whereas the controlled tomatoes lost their firmness at approximately 25%. Um, incorporation of um, the Halocyte nanotubes also uh, change the gas barrier properties of polyethylene gas, polyethylene films, and we obtained lower transmission rates for um, oxygen and water vapor. Uh, this means 
uh, migration of oxygen from outside into the packaging cat space was limited, which resulted in lower bacterial growth of um, uh, bacterial growth on chicken surfaces that we tested. Um, it also meant the migration of water vapor from inside of the packaging to outside was also limited, and this we tested on strawberries. And strawberries that we uh, packaged with our films um, uh, demonstrated almost 50% less weight loss compared to strawberries packaged with polyethylene films, which didn't contain the halocyte nanotubes. Um, I believe the food packaging materials we prepared by using only natural elements has, have a lot of potential for keeping food fresh and safe. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Great. If you could please state your name and affiliation before asking your question, we'd appreciate it. So it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Um, I'm just trying to understand the novelty of your active packaging compared with other active packaging that's currently available. Mm -hmm. um, is, it, is it the fact that it can do both this ethylene scavenging and it has this antimicrobial effects? Yeah, uh, that's one thing. Uh, there's multifunctionality. Uh, we can design all these three into the same film. So you can coat the surface of the polyethylene with our antibacterial halocyte nanotubes that would do the release. And in the polyethylene film, we can uh, put the uh, empty halocyte nanotubes which do the ethylene scavenging and barrier uh, effect. So this is one of the uniquenesses. But uh, the halocyte nanotubes have been not used in food packaging before their ethylene scavenging or other gas scavenging properties were not demonstrated before. And also, I believe uh, the, the fact that all the components are natural also make it very unique because we have clay, we have thyme oil, and polyethylene. So there is not much concern about toxicity. And also, you mentioned the ethylene, that it takes up 20% more ethylene, I think. Does that correlate? Does that mean that um, the ripening is delayed by a fifth? Um, or uh, we is didn't it not quite test that exactly. We, I can tell you numbers, but um, just our experiments showed uh, at the same time period, um, the test samples looked much better than control samples. For example, after six days, we showed it with bananas and apples. So uh, I'm not sure if that 20% correlates exactly to the time. I wonder as well, does it mean that you can store food at um, maybe higher temperatures than previously? Yeah, that would I'm also, yeah, that's also possible. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, yes, uh, sir, right here. Uh, ben Valsler from Chemistry World magazine. Uh, you've mentioned a couple of times they're all natural materials, but obviously the the structure, the fact that they are nanotubes, may mean that they have different properties when they get back into the environment. Do you think it's likely to be environmentally benign when people have used this and then thrown it in the bin? Uh, of course, when you have nanoparticles, it's always a concern. Uh, of course, when this product is about to commercialize, we have to test all these. We have to do migration tests. But uh, we are, at this point, just relying on literature. We know that um, other tubular experiments with other tubular nanostructures showed not much migration. And of course, a little bit, but it was always much below the acceptable uh, numbers. So, um, and in terms of biocompatibility and toxicity, uh, there are other, again, there are some papers published which showed um, halocyte nanotubes are not toxic, but of course, at the point of commercialization, migration tests uh, should be done. Okay. Thank you. Anything from online? No? Okay. Uh, Bela Puslug, ACS Communications. Um, how uh, much are these 
clay particles incorporated into the into the plastic, or or is it a surface coating, or is it a, something that happens to come in contact with the with the food material, and uh, and uh, there there were attempts, well, many attempts, of of using uh, absorbers or specific things like ethylene or carbon dioxide or oxygen that were just inserted in the package with uh, with just plain old uh, polyethylene film or uh, or functionalized films mm -hmm. uh, how how is this uh, uh, working out uh, first of all is the, the clay material a kind of an innocuous thing that you can eat perhaps when it comes in contact like like essentially what will it, uh, what will it do <coughs> If it contacts the cut surface of, of, of a fruit or, or, or a piece of meat, uh, I mean, again, uh, it's uh, of course it's a natural thing. It's just clay, aluminum, silicate. But of course, if it's nano, uh, we have to think about it. So I cannot tell that you can eat it, of course. But um, for the antibacterial part, the nano uh, holocyte nanotubes are coated onto the surface as a uh, thin film in nanoscale. We have approximately 200 nanometer um, thick film on the surface, so they will be in contact with food. So that makes it more effective in terms of antibacterial activity. So the thyme oil will be directly released from site nanotubes and reach the packaging head space. So for the antibacterial part, they are in contact with food, but for the ethylene scavenging part and barrier part, uh, they are incorporated into the polyethylene film, so they are not much in contact with the food. But again, uh, tests need to be done to uh, make a solution on this one. Thank you. I just wonder how uh, you're manufacturing um, these nanotubes and also how much you think it might add to the expense of the packaging. Um, they are naturally available. There are uh, reserves in different countries for helicite nanotubes. Turkey is one of them. Turkey is one of the largest uh, reserves uh, for helicite nanotubes in the world. Uh, they are cost effective. They are not expensive, especially compared to other tubular nanostructures like carbon nanotubes. They are much cheaper. And we don't think it would add to the cost significantly. And uh, the rest, processing of polyethylene uh, and then melt compounding these two together, halicide nanotubes and polyethylene. It's again, not an expensive uh, procedure. Okay, thanks. Anything from online? No? Any additional questions? Yeah, Doug Dollamore, American Chemical Society. Mm -hmm. um, doctor, um, this goes back to the delayed ripening question. Um, how does this packaging um, um, compare to other wrappings in terms of its uh, effect on taste of the food? Uh, for the ripening process, we are using, for the ripening effect, for actually to prevent ripening, we are using empty halocyte nanotubes. So they are not loaded with anything. And I don't think, oh, you meant the taste of bananas? Okay. Yeah. We didn't test anything on that, actually, sorry. So we didn't test how they, the bananas taste after um, being packaged with our films for a certain time. We, we didn't do that. Is that something you might look into? Oh, uh, yeah, probably. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned the fruits and vegetables. Um, I, I didn't quite hear anything about how this packaging works uh, with meat. Uh, actually, I mentioned it, but maybe it wasn't clear. Uh, we checked with chicken samples, and we wrapped chicken samples with our film and the controlled polyethylene film. Uh, the bacterial growth on chicken surfaces were much um, slower with our film, approximately like five times slower than the controlled film. And um, it's also in terms of the um, oxygen barrier properties, less oxygen, if less oxygen is present in the packaging head space, less growth is expected. And we also demonstrated that. So on chicken samples, um, 
covered with film containing callocyte nanotubes, there were less bacterial growth. I think we have an online question, yes. Um, this question is from me, Katie Cottingham, mm -hmm. American oh, sorry. Chemical <laughs> Society. That's okay. Uh, no online questions yet. But um, So I was wondering when this film would be available um, to the public. When is it going to show up on grocery store shelves to wrap up fruits and vegetables and meats? Actually, uh, I don't think it will be too far because uh, we have a patent issued on this. We have a US patent uh, issued last year on this topic. And we are um, talking to companies, to many of them, which are interested in commercializing this. But of course, there are some, as I mentioned before, safety issues. And uh, of course, in terms of that, we have to wait. But uh, we are kind of ready to uh, design packaging, which, you know, uh, which can be used especially on uh, one uh, fruit or vegetables because for each fruit or vegetable we can design it better and make it better. So I think we are ready to do that. Christine, South American Chemical Society. So um, is this going to be marketed toward industry like the food manufacturing industry or will consumers also be able to get it like they can get plastic wrap to wrap leftovers with or both? I think both, yeah. Uh, we are in contact with food packaging companies at this point, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, thank you. The archived version of this session will be soon posted at bit.ly slash ACS, uh, ACS live underscore DC. Please join us for our next press conference at 1.30 p.m. today on a way to get fat to talk again to lower blood glucose and weight. Thank you.